Hey there, welcome to my studio. We are going to be working on some olive oil bottles today. Move the camera just a touch. There we go. So, oil bottles. These guys, I may make one or two with a little spout on them. But they get like a little metal spigot top on there. And uh, we'll measure that out when we're throwing it. We're gonna use a pound and a half of clay. And not too many crazy tools or anything like that. Just a regular sponge, our makeup sponge for putting in some lines and cleaning those up. Wooden knife. I think this one's made from a ruler. Uh, I like these shapes. I think they work really well. They're easy to make. Uh, nothing special here. One little flexible rib and one metal rib for shaping. And here we go. Joyce handed me this bottle. Joyce says the other wonderful potter here. You may hear her making noise or laughing in the background. Uh, so this is the piece that we're making. It has two little thumb dimples for grabbing. And uh, this pops in and off. There you go. And I'll make a couple with a little spout on there. Just kind of a different variation of the same piece. Well, let's get started. We'll see how many we can make here before we get tired. Missing one thing, let me go find a towel so I can clean my hands while I'm working. Thank you. All right, here we go. Oh, and here's our wire that we use. It just has two dowels uh, with the hole drilled through it. And then uh, I use fishing leader material for creating the wire. So uh, I like the thickness of this. It doesn't skim off a bunch off the bottom so I'm not losing a bunch of clay off of there. And then if I use fishing line at this diameter, which gives me a thin cut, it breaks too quickly. So if we use a fishing leader material, which I know everybody has around because we all love fishing, works pretty well. All right, one and a half pounds of clay. Here we go. No more fishing talk. Hey, Ma. When I'm throwing, I try not to use crazy wheel speeds. Uh, if I get the wheel going too fast, it's, I feel like it starts to push me around a little bit too much. I don't like being pushed around. No trimmed feet on these, so the bottom is just be the same thickness as your walls. Any of the pots I make, I don't want to have to trim a foot on. It's kind of, uh, sometimes it's this extra time that's taking that we don't have time to do. Hey, Dad. All right. So we'll start our first pull. I always compress the tops <clears throat> of your pots. If you can control the rim, the rest of the body of it will follow suit. If you lose control of the top of it, uh, you're going to have trouble getting anything under control. Nice big pull. With that, with the first couple of pulls, Make sure that you leave enough space in between your fingers for the clay to actually move through. And the more clay that you use, the bigger space you have to offer. You know, if your fingers are really tight together, so like, you know, outside hand, inside hand, if, the, if your fingers are really tight, it doesn't give the clay space to move through your fingers and it's harder to get it to go up. So just leave a, a nice step there when you're pulling up. That'll help it out. All right, so this will be our last pull, and we'll also start putting the shape in a little bit. Get some of the water out of the inside there. And oftentimes, like your first instinct is to really belly this out. Don't belly it out too far. When you bring the when you bring this in, it makes this look wider. 
And I, I stop the belly lower than I initially think I should. Then also if this gets too big, you know, we put thumb dimples on there to hold it. And you have to have hands that are too large to be able to, to grab onto it. All right, now we're gonna collar the top of this end. Uh, this is one spot where you definitely don't want the wheel going too slow. I like to try to have some compression on the top when I'm bringing it in, lots of points of contact around it, and make sure that there's plenty of uh, water or slip around there. So I'm holding all around. I can kind of have the top running through my fingers here, and then it's just a bit of a squeeze in. Up and in. We'll do a pull. Take your time. Start to refine your shape a little bit. And get this part finished. Learning to collar something in takes a lot of practice. It can be frustrating at first. But once you start to get it, it all makes sense. It's more difficult with clay that is short or that doesn't like to stretch too much. If your clay is overworked and wet, everything is going to start to collapse on you. All right, so we'll get this wet. We're gonna use the piece that we're gonna to add to the top as our measuring device. And I want this just to, the edges, just to be touching the inside of the, of the walls here. And that's exactly where we need it. And then by the time it shrinks, it'll be, uh, it'll sit in there nice and tight. One other thing you can do to make the, the crew at top sit on there nicely is when you're glazing it just scrape off some of the glaze on the inside so it stays a little rough the oil can make the the glaze a little slippery and make this pop out but if you scrape off the glaze right here uh, it'll stay in there a little bit better we'll get rid of this clay on the bottom all right on this part we just hold our tool with the bevel facing up I run my finger alongside of it and we create a little little foot there that'll help catch the glaze. And we'll add three little lines. The glazes I use should emphasize these lines They'll pool up in there, make it a little bit thicker, and hopefully they'll stand out. Now we'll add our uh, dimples in there. I don't know why I turned it. There's one. There's the other. Just kind of work it in there. And, uh, that's about it. You can use your bat pins as a reference point to get them straight away from each other. I always push my wire through. I don't usually pull it. Uh, when I set it down, uh, I'm never nicking anything on this side. I'm more apt to, to nick something or not get it all the way down, I feel like. Then also, if I have a, a pointer that I'm working to, I don't have to try to fish it under there to pull it. And also, I'm not trying to run a bunch of water or anything underneath it when I slice it off. You know, so I think some people are taught that, that you pool water all around here and then you slice it off and then it kind of floats off. But then if you do that, you're pushing water underneath the pot and then you take that pot off and now the bottom's all wet. And then you set it down on your board and then it's gonna really be stuck to the board. It's not gonna wanna come off.
All right, so we'll do a couple more with the, the metal top, and then we'll do a couple with a little spout on there. It's been a while since I made the spouted ones. I was trying to remember when you make them, you have to put the spout off center because the clay untwists as it fires. So you have to keep that in mind when you're doing that so that when it untwists, it's gonna be in the position that you want it at. Everybody has their own way of pulling up the walls. My first pull, I'm kind of pulling it and compressing the top the whole way. Just helps me add a little bit more control over the top of the piece. You can see the clay is getting a little wobbly there. It means it's getting torqued. Oftentimes it doesn't want to stretch any thinner than that going up. Get some of the water out. bottle shape here. And who knows, sometimes your pots collapse, they get a little too thin or wobbly, it's not right, it's not a big deal. We'll reuse the clay, you'll learn something that you didn't know before by making that mistake. Lots of different shapes you can make for these. Maybe I'll show you one that I used to make with a handle. That was always said was my self-portrait. When I collar things in and try to neck it up and stuff, oftentimes my head starts nodding a bit. It's called the potter's nod. It's not something I intentionally do, it's just something that happens. And then when you're coloring things in, oftentimes they'll get uh, a little wobbly on top, no big deal. Cut it off. There we go. Let's see where we're at here. All right, so it's a little wiggly. Bring it in a touch take too much of a effort to bring it in there. That sits nicely around the top. Finish our shape here. And oftentimes you'll see me just kind of looking off into the distance. And uh, thank you. Uh, I have a mirror. I throw out a mirror, right? So I can see what the proportions of the peas look like. When I'm looking at my pot, I have this uh, skewed view of what everything looks like. Because uh, when you're gonna purchase something you want it displayed, you don't look at it like that. It's usually right in front of you. Uh, and I don't want to have to bend over to see what it looks like. So if I have a mirror across from me, I can see exactly what it looks like. Now it's kind of weird getting used to working and watching yourself in the mirror, but uh, once you get the hang of it, it's a, it's a good tool, at least for me. I don't like, I don't like bending over like that. Put in our little foot there. And then when I do that, so I'm pushing in with my finger here to, to create that foot and uh, sometimes it alters the bottom, just that little bit. And uh, so it kind of comes out and then up. I don't like that. I want it just to have a nice clean line coming from there, so I'll fix that. It's kind of funny, you know, you do all these steps to get the shape and then you do little things that alter the shape. You gotta go back and fix that. And, uh, it can kind of slow you down sometimes. It's good to keep those type of movements to a minimum. Oh, 
always come in and clean these things up. It's much easier to soften those lines so they're not sharp to do it right now. Instead of waiting until it's dry, then you have to sand it. And uh... Hey, Allison. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about the whole wooden knife thing here with the next one. Uh, but yeah, so then we don't have to sand it. Get everything finished as much as you can right away. Put our little dimples in here. Wet the fingers so it doesn't stick. One thing I don't have with me when I'm throwing right now is uh, a sponge on a stick. Those are helpful for uh, getting all the water out of the bottom there. Here we go. Throw one more that will get the straight body, and we'll do one at the spout, and then we'll do the self portrait. And you can smooth out the bottom with your thumb if you want. Doesn't really matter, I just like that rib. I think it does a good job. There we go. A couple of pulls here and get our height. One more pull to get height and a little bit of our shape in there. And I take uh, I take my thumb with my thumbnail and I gather in this clay so that I'm not wasting too much clay. I don't like to have all that clay fanned out on the bottom. Uh, I like to use as much of it as possible. If you're just starting out and having trouble coloring in the pot, leave it just a little bit thicker. And that support down here is going to help you a lot up here. It's a nice thick rim and just add a little support down here and then it should make coloring in pieces a little bit easier. I don't come out too far. A little water on there. Lots of points of contact. Keep squeezing it in. Trying to control the top with my thumb. I have a hard time continuing to neck this in or collar it in if the top gets really wobbly. So if that starts to happen for me, I cut it off, recenter that, and then it makes things a little bit easier for me. Also, when you're doing this, you got to be happy with everything that's that's done on the bottom half. You can't get a throwing stick in there and alter it. Uh, that's, in my opinion, pretty tough work. I prefer just to have everything done by the time I'm ready to bring this top part in. just a little bit too big for the spout. That looks a little bit better. Just a touch more. There we go. And 
Now, I don't know if it matters. But I like to have a bottleneck for this to sit inside of, to hopefully make enough contact for this entire part. I'm assuming it matters, uh, as opposed to something that just comes up and stops, and then that sits there like that. I don't think that's probably enough to support this spigot from popping out. I guess it's not a spigot, a cruet top, oil top. There we go. Alrighty. Now when I'm making these bottles, I'm not always trying to push every single bit of clay up in there like I would with a mug. I don't mind having that little bit of extra support down here to support the shape when I'm bringing this in. You're putting a lot of torque on the piece when you're doing that. So uh, with our wooden knife, so the bevel is facing me, right? I'm gonna come in and literally cut. I'm not trying to, to push or shove the clay away. I'm just trying to literally have the clay come in to this point and have it cut off. If I push and shove too much, uh, it's really gonna start to distort the shape of everything. Now with the bevel facing up, I slide that underneath. So I'm creating a bit of a shadow under there, which visually makes the piece look lighter. If there's a shadow under there, it doesn't make it look like it's uh, grounded to the table or whatever it's sitting on. Uh, it makes it almost look like it's floating a little bit adds a little bit of visual lightness to the piece. I'll come in here and make sure I enjoy the shape and everything. And there's just a very, very small flare on the bottom. You can, you can come in with your tool and refine that even more. A lot of the glazes I use tend to be a little bit runny. So it's nice to have something to stop the glaze from running off the pot and onto the shelves. Alrighty. You can always check one more time, make sure that still fits. Looks good. Put our thumb dimples in. One over there, one over here. Okie dokie. You can see these got pretty pretty wide pretty quick so we'll try to make a couple that are a little bit skinnier all right one with the pouring spout kind of like a pitcher spout on here you could use a cork as a stopper for these uh, I make a little stopper out of clay fire that. It makes kind of a nice ringing when you put the, the ceramic stopper in there because it tinks against the clay and it has a nice noise when you go to use it. There we go. And you see whenever I, all right, so I was compressing this, compressing, compressing. Now there's some slip on my, on my rib here that I was using. I take that, uh, helps clean up my tool a little bit, but now I have some slip in my hand and I can apply that to the pot. I'm not always going in for more and more water and making a big mess. Now I know some potters like to dump a lot of water around and use it that way, that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't do it. just a little bit extra thickness on the top so when you're pulling slowly release at the very top of the point there don't pull through it you'll get this really flimsy thin rim it makes it harder to control the entire piece with the thin rim at the end of it all I can if I want this thin I can thin it out very easily 
what I can't always do is thicken it up to make it wider and sturdier very easily to help me uh, maintain control of the piece. Uh, so this one, try to make a little bit more narrow. is a little soft. Sometimes that can uh, make it not stand up to too much abuse. But it doesn't hurt your hands to push it around either. So that's kind of a give and take with it all. crinkle there. No big deal. Support it on the inside. Run your rib up along there. There you go. Needs to come in just a little bit more. Trusty makeup sponge here. Smooth out the top. Let's see, we'll cut off this little skirt to clay. Kind of coming in at a nice angle here. I'm not holding it away from it and smooshing the clay. I have it pointing in at it so the clay comes in and it's cutting. Cut it away. shape here. Each one of these will have just a little bit of a different characteristic to it. It's good to make things in runs or in multiples. Uh, so have an idea of what you're trying to make. Draw it out. Know what you want. Make it a dozen, two dozen times and then see what you get. It's not always going to be the same. There will be variations in there. And then you'll say, oh, I never thought of doing that little part on that. Maybe I want to, to implement that even uh, a little bit more because that was interesting. But uh, you never find those little variances in shape in the sketch pad. Uh, a lot of times they're just kind of happenstance. And uh, I like to work in multiples for that reason. See, this one's supposed to so we'll put our thumb prints in here. All right, this one's going to have a little spout. Uh, I got the top just a little bit thin, but it'll work. Uh, I suppose I was checking it for that, but anyways. Uh, so I'm going to be grabbing it from this side. So I'll come here. And I'm facing it. It's going to be at, let's say that this is 12, this is 6. We're going to pull the spout at about 10 o'clock. So my fingers are dry on the hand that I'm supporting the, the rim with. Wet my pinky and put in this little pouring lip 
at 10 o'clock. All right, so I, I'll grab it here and then it's off to the side. Now as this fires, this, we put a lot of torque on this and it's twisting when we're doing it, right? We've got lots of twist and it's gonna untwist in the kiln and, and it'll be straight at the very end of it. So it looks a little funky right there. But it'll be straight. And then you can measure this for a cork or you can make this little ceramic topper to sift inside there. All right, we'll try to do one little, what I call self-portrait oil bottle. I definitely don't always think of myself as this oil bottle, but uh, sometimes I feel like this. And I like making them just because it has a little bit more, it has more gestural marks in there. And it's, it's kind of funny. Now this one's not going to be quite as large. I'm doing some gestural things with it and I'm going to push the clay around a little bit. So I want there to be a little bit more clay to support these uh, marks that I'm going to make. Now this will be our last one. I'll let you all get to it to making your own here. This one's just a little bit more angular. Get some of the water out of the inside. Collar this in. Lots of points of contact when I collar it in. Put a lot of stress on the piece. You see these ones will get a handle on the side of it since they're a little bit too wide to comfortably grip. There is a, a stronger failure rate when I make these. I tend to put strong marks in there and then you know sometimes they they crinkle and fall in. So I'm going to use the curved side of this, kind of push this in. Has a little bit more of a swinging out. Like I said, a little bit more angular piece. And now, slow the wheel down. up some of the clay for a foot on the bottom there. Get the wheel moving a lot slower. Now I make more fast and strong marks while it's moving slow. And you'll get some of these lines going on in here. And I try to kind of stop in the middle there where the, uh, the farthest part out is. So I come up there. I just get a little wobbly. So this is my, uh, my self-portrait for the end of the day. It's been a big day. 
feel a little tired. All right, there we go. We kind of got it there. Uh, so we kind of push it and then it catches a little bit, right? And then it comes out just a little bit right here. And we grab it and we bend them over. So, so the way I see it, right? I still got my belt on. Uh, the pants are here. My belly's kind of coming over the top a little bit. I'm tired. I'm just kind of sitting down and that's sitting forward there. And then uh, we'll get a handle on the other side of the pot there. And uh, so that's my self portrait cruet. My, my end of the day, feeling tired, had a big day, probably a good day, but uh, I was working hard. Anyway, so that's, you can kind of see where it sits over a little bit. And then there's my belly hanging over with the tight belt. So those are the oil bottles. Uh, yeah, I hope you all learned a few things about making the form, coloring pieces in, and uh, hopefully a few things about the function of the piece and how your hands should go around it. And uh, maybe some ideas about how to add pieces of yourself to the pot. And uh, you know, the idea of doing a self-portrait and an oil bottle can be uh, a little bit out there, but it's fun to think of yourself as your pots that you're making because you put a lot of yourself into them when you're making them and uh, you know, they kind of are a part of you. So think about yourself in your day and try to put it in there. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.